hope, no. That's the, that's the spirit. That's the spirit. Listen, I am not a very religious. I am a believer. I am a believer because we thought, we thought believing you cannot. You have to believe. You need it for yourself, you know. Not for God. For yourself you need to believe. You cannot live without to believe in something that is above me. Everybody needs a boss. I, I am sure that I could live independent, but only because I believe that there is, there is, there it is. Where he is, I don't know. But I tell you, I was, <laughs> I was sitting in Israel on the beach. The Mediterranean Sea is the nicest sea because it has philosophical uh, 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 liquid, the liquid uh, salted like our liquid in our bodies, so you can swim with open eyes, you know. And I was sitting by the beach and it was so beautiful. That's a beautiful country. It's a little warm, but it's a beautiful country. And you know, the, the sky was so blue that it burned the eyes, how blue the sky and this green water. And here the horizon, when it came together, and all of a sudden I saw like a star, and I said, that's God. And I came to Hilda, because I, Hilda was living in Israel, I came to Hilda. And I said, Hilda, God is in Israel. I saw him. <laughs> and I believe that it, that it was a God, you know? I, I, I am sure of it. So, uh, girls, all these that I told you, this is my finish of it, is that it was, I don't know if it was one percentage of the stuff that happened. I was reading three beautiful stories about the occupation of France. I am still reading everything that I can get, you know. I, about a month ago, I don't see, yeah, that's also God's spirit, I don't see and I read. Hmm. But I read by certain conditions. I have special glasses. It has to be dark outside. I, I, I read in bed at night. I go to bed at 8 o'clock after Jeopardy. I switch off all the lights. I go to bed. I sleep, if I have a good sleep, till 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And then I make light and I read. Because that's the condition that I am able to read, you know. In Ravensbrück we were one month. After a month with Elva, with El, Elsa, we said nothing. Yo, everybody told us, don't go, don't go volunteering. And we said, we, said, we go the first, they will look for volunteers. We will be the first that we will go. Because even the gas chamber, they had a gas chamber. Not all the all those uh, those camps had gas chamber, but Auschwitz and Buchenwald didn't have. When they had these sick people, they sent them to Auschwitz through the gas chambers. And and, uh, um, and so we we went by the first by the first uh, uh, opportunity, and we came to a small camp. There it was already a little bit better. Because it was by a by a, um, um, uh, uh, airport, and the, all the airports were military, so it was a military airport, and it began. It was bombed, and and uh, uh, they went in the bunk, the bunkers, the the German. <laughs> the big heroes, you know, went to the bunker, and we went out and were dancing, you know, and stealing the food that they cooked in the kitchen. So I ate after three and a half years, I ate semolina in milk. They had a 
big pot with semolina, with milk, and the girls that they were working there, they brought it and we, we ate it. And, but they were cruel, they were cruel. From there they were, we had to walk again, but in one of the villages we, in one of the villages, I am taking, I am speaking about, about the end of the war. Mm -hmm. So in one of the villages, we said, here we stay, we are not going farther. It was the 1st of May, we said it was enough. And really the 3rd of May the Russians came in. It was already, it was in Germany, the Russians came in and we were free and we began to walk back home by foot because everything was bombed. Poland didn't have anything. I, I saw Warsaw. Warsaw. It was empty. It was no one house existed. So we went walking again and we called, it wasn't so, so full of cars like now. If we saw a car from far, especially a, a van, so we stopped them and if they had place they put us one or two or so. We slowly, slowly came home. I didn't know who, was, who stayed alive. From the family I came home and my parents were home and my siblings were home. So it was a bit, my mother came to the, uh, there I met my husband. My husband lost my family from the same city. He was standing so by our house and he saw my mother run out. She heard the train and he was show, and he asked Mrs. Friedman, where are you running? It was a Saturday, a Shabbat, you know. And she said, I know that my daughter Eddie is, in the, is on the way home. Somebody saw me, so we said, who is coming from two of us home before the first, go to the other family to say that the, uh, the other person is on the... So this boy, we called him Anka, came on Friday but went to my mother to tell her that I'm on the way home. So she heard that uh, train. So she thought the train came in once in a week or once in two weeks, you know, because everything was bombed. Uh, so uh, she, she thought that I can be there. And I was there, so she, when she saw me, she, she fainted on the station fainted there and we came home and and my mom invited this Ladislav boy that was standing, Ladislav Grossman that was standing there and that this uh, gray, with gray hair, that's his last, last picture, that's a story that you have to hear because Two, two pictures are there. That is his last picture. That that's a story that it that it will be for you very interesting. But I want to finish this. And my mother said uh, invited this boy for a lunch, and he came. And then we went a little bit out for a walk, and we became we became. Uh, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, but my mother was all the time looking at my knee, looking at my knee. She said, Eddie, you have, we have to do something with this knee. This knee is sick, this knee is sick. What can I tell you? I was three years after I was in hospitals. I think there you have even a picture from Switzerland in hospital bed. I am in hospital bed. I was three years in hospital bed, eleven months, even not to the to the toilet. I couldn't go. And the end was that the doctor said we cannot do anything else, only to operate to stiffen the the knee. And and then I I was a year married when they did it. 
and went to my stay, my need, so I said to my husband, Ladislav, listen, do, it doesn't bother you that I have a limp? And he answered, if your soul would limp, that would bother me, but not a limping leg. So then I said, you are the best man in the world. And so, if you heard about the story shop on the main street that my husband wrote his book, I can show you, and wrote the script, and it was done as to a movie that got an Oscar. So my husband that has a movie that got an Oscar. So he was a writer, he had a PhD, he was everything. He wasn't that he, that he was something so, and I was so, so he took me. No, he was a prof university professor with a PhD, with an Oscar, with everything, the highest possible education. I was good enough for him, you know. And so the, the life in, in Prague is now very nice when it's free, but under the communists it was very hard. Nothing, you cannot, even to stand for a, a lemon, I was standing an, an hour to get one lemon. My son was three months old. I had the lemon on the table and my husband came from work and said, I will have lemon tea and I told, no, it's not for you, it's for George. And then he died so young, he was 60 yet, and, and I was so crying, I didn't give him even a tea with, with lemon. So it was very hard, and, and it wasn't freedom, it was no freedom. You didn't know what will happen the next day with you. It was a very hard time, and by the first possibility we left Prague even if Prague is a beautiful city and and people say to leave Prague it's impossible we left it and and I said so what what will we do now so we were a little bit economically not not bad off because you the he got the, the movie got an Oscar, he, so we, we had enough money to buy a car. We sat in the car, went through, went to Austria. And in Austria we had to decide what to do, where to stay, and my husband said, come to Israel. From there we will not need anymore to pack suitcases. That will be our last stop. My son wasn't happy there. He was there so... He didn't like it there. He was so English-oriented. So he was studying. So we, we said we don't have any other choice. Because he said, I will anyway run away and so. So we sent him to England and there he studied. He, he got a master in, in linguistics and in music. So we stayed there and uh, and one night day he took me to work and went home and died in one minute, in one second. The same day that he that he took me to work. And uh, so I buried him there and then I said, what, what will I do here? I have one child and we wanted so much children I couldn't have more because I was four times pregnant. And once, once before I had, once they took because of the leg, they couldn't operate if I am pregnant. So they took it before George and then came George and two after George. So he's a, so I said he I have one son I have two granddaughters. What will I do here alone? 
So I decided to come here. I got it immediately because I studied biology. I have a master degree in biology. So, you know, it was a time when the immigration here to Canada was on a high level, but the intellectuals, they, they, they even didn't ask me what will you do there, what, nothing. I, I wrote, sent them the diploma to, of, of, of my studies and this, I got it immediately, the immigration, so I came here. He came to, he, because he was here already, he studied in England. And from England he wrote us, my husband was still alive, he wrote us a letter. Uh, Toronto is looking for a PhD student and I applied. I don't, I am not sure that I will get it because they have their own people also, but they had to to make it official that they are looking for the... And on the end he got it. So, but in, in the meantime my husband died and he came to the funeral and he was there a month in Israel because in Israel they put the, the, the tombstone after four weeks. So, and he asked if, he, if it's allowed to do it. In Uni York University from 1981 you can find the papers of, uh, of George Grossman. And when he came back, they had replaced him already. So he came to Canada without anything, without... So he, he began to work it there. Then he fell in love with this woman in America. And, and they live there. And the girls are here. And I am here. If I am not, not mistaken, I have to be this. I tell you, I am from a very, very religious family. I don't know how much you took from the book. But if you took every page, you will say, my great grandparents were so religious, but very tolerant, never criticized us that we are not, never said one word that my our house, uh, household wasn't like my grandfather wanted, it was kosher, everything. My parents were, not me, but my parents, yes. But even so, it wasn't good for my grandparents, not for what we loved the grandparents. They gave us a lot of love and, and home warm, you know, warm to, to, to put, to feel that you have family. And I have so a tiny family, you know, we are all together. My mother was a beautiful girl, beautiful girl. And there is a picture of her before she married and my father. My father changed synagogue because my father was in the synagogue where his parents were very religious. And when Leia, Leia was the oldest, so when they sent her to high school, it was gymnasia then, so they said, what, they, what religious Jew send the girls to study? They do, the Jew that send the girls to study don't have place in our synagogue. So my father said, I am interested my daughter to let study. And he left the synagogue and went in a less, the less religious one, you know. They were three synagogues and he went in the rest of religion because for him the education was more than the religion. I, I lived a life that was completely changed, of course, because it's almost 100 years when I was born. But I want to tell you when I heard, heard here the, how hard people, how hard these young people are working, how hard they are working. When I remember, we couldn't buy bread, we couldn't buy pasta, we couldn't buy anything that is half done. We had to make everything from scratch, everything. Seven kids, I went to my both grandparents to help them out. 
because my one of my grandmothers had also also some problems, health problems. We were washed the dishes there and cleaned and went shopping with her and went to school and were the best students at school and everything was time and we were we didn't have a cleaning lady we cleaned we were cleaning and we had you know we were nine people we it wasn't a room like this it was a room we had one room that was bigger than the whole, the whole my whole apartment you know it was it was uh, huge and and from nine beds to wash the the laundry and and not dishwashers and not not laundry laundry uh, uh, machines everything by hand mm -hmm. everything by hand you can imagine we had a double double uh, plate you had only eighteen plates I don't speak about the small plate about the glasses about and, uh, you have no idea what it was. It was like, like in a in a factory, mm. and we did it alone. Everything, mm. everything alone. Mm. Because I be I am a believer. Listen, I am. I don't see God. I tell you the truth. I see God in you, in her, in her, in me, in this room. He is everywhere. You cannot see God as a human being or humanize God because God cannot be human because he couldn't catch all these. God cannot take care of, of billions of people. You have to take care on yourself also. He can help you to, to, to spiritually to do what you want to do if well, to choose the right way. I was never ever choosing choosing anything serious before I said what would do my husband and do I have it well? Do is is it good, is it bad? I believe that God exists. I tell you I believe that He saved me. So I believe in God. And I tell you, I am going to the synagogue also because I speak Hebrew. And if you will understand this beautiful, beautiful poet, po poetic of the, of, the, of the prayers, that so beautiful poesy, so nice stories. I don't say that in the Bible, Listen, I am very objective. I don't say that in the Bible all the stories are nice. The Bible has a lot of ugly stories, a lot of ugly stories. I, I came in a little bit because I was going on study session about the, the Bible, you know. So I, I, I am interested in a lot of things. Thank God that my head is still able to catch it, you know. My youngest brother. That my husband's brother that didn't survive. His sister that didn't survive. You did ca cousin of my husband. My husband's parents and four, uh, 28 people died by bombing of Slovakia and and he after the war he take the, he, they were buried and that's 1946 that before the before the operation of my Iraq. So that's that's a friend of mine, that's me, that's Ladislav. I think that's Arnold Lustig, that's another uh, 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 writer, Czech writer. He also survived. All those guys survived the war. We all were in the war and all survived. Not grandparents, my parents. Uh, my mother, my mother is buried in, in Israel. So that's my husband, the little one. That's my husband, he could be, I don't know, maybe, maybe before high school, Yad Vashem, they, they have still, they still miss million names. Mm -hmm. Because nobody can come and tell them who it was. 
in in human I ever from I am I know tens and tens of families that nobody came back nobody when I was speaking to the Slovaks you know and I I told them I told them my my I said please please I am going I will die soon because I am old I please you to bring up the children without hate so they will not, not have to be ashamed for the parents or grandparents what they did because your grandparents sent me to for to be killed your grandparents sent me but you had the courage to open the the the, the uh, uh, bottle and let out this terrible truth what happened to us and what happened to the Slovak Jews and it's a shame now on you and you are now ashamed about your parents and grandparents. Don't let your children to be in the same situation. Music